Hi, it's Jen from Shabby Fabrics back with a year in words and this time it's for July and we thought it'd be fun to of course celebrate summer and beach balls and how fun to be able to make uh, this fun little block. So hey, if you're in the club, I'm so happy for you that you are able to grab a spot as you know that is sold out. Limited number of kits that are kind of left over for you to grab. Um, be sure to grab those. As you know, all the applique is pre-fused and laser cut. You can just be jumping into the fun. What a cute little wall hanging it is to be able to display each month of the year. But if you're just watching and you want to know how to make the uh, beach ball block, let's dive right into that and I'll show you how. Basically, it's just making a pinwheel block and then we snowball the corners. So it's kind of two blocks in one, so to speak. So I'll talk to you about uh, just how to start off making our pinwheel and then we'll move on from there to snowball those corners. I'll give you an option with a new Creative Grid corner clipper tool. So we'll take our light fabric and on the back side, we'll do this with both pieces. We'll just draw a line from corner to corner and we'll be sewing a quarter of an inch on either side. And that's really how uh, most pinwheels are created. There are some new other things on the market, but this is the way that I learned how to make half square triangles, which is what leads to pinwheel blocks. So with the light fabric on the top, I just place a patchwork pin out of the way of my sewing track so that I can leave those pins in the entire time. I find that when I can leave pins in versus removing them as I go, the, the fabric stays stabilized and I have better seam, um, my points come out better because I'm not removing the seam before I get there. I'm able to keep the in throughout the sewing. So we're just going to go to our machine now. And I like to sew this with just a scant quarter. So as I'm coming up to my machine that has kind of the, the gate on, I have a 57D pressure foot in here. I'm going to have that kind of over on this side. So I'm sewing just a little bit of a scant. I like to have um, plenty of, of space to make sure my block comes out square and maybe even a little bit extra to square up. So rather than being, so my, my guide, here's my line and my fence is just to the right of that ever so slightly. And that's going to give me the ability to hopefully have a little bit of something to square up. We'll see. Now I'll just come right back down here on the other side. Make sure I'm at that same spot where I'm just kind of biasing it just a little to give me a scant. Now we'll just cut those apart and I like to press to the dark. When I'm making pinwheels, I start off with pressing toward the dark and later as I'm starting to sew some of those units together, that's when I'll start to press some seams open. But you'll see that as we progress. Those little points, somehow someone came up with a term dog ear. I have no idea where that term came from. I just know that's what I hear so often is those just need to be trimmed away because we certainly don't want to have any extra bulk. If you've made pinwheels before, you know there's plenty of fabric coming together in that center point and anything extra is definitely not helpful. So anything you don't need such as these extra little flaps out here. Let's go ahead and trim that away. And I'll try to keep myself clean and organized here. All right, so my recommendation, I can't, 
I'm embarrassed to admit how many pinwheels I have sewn together in the wrong arrangement that I now 100% of the time <laughs> lay out those because it's very easy to get one wrong. And hey, isn't that kind of a cool block? But it's not the block we're going for. So let's go ahead and lay that out and make sure we have everything correct. Now we know that the measure of a good pinwheel is that center point. Why I mention that is our next step will be to place these right side together. Let me just start down here because this one's very obvious that I, wherever my tender spot is, whatever the spot is that I want to come out perfectly, that's where I want to begin sewing. That's this place. So I will go right side together. And notice I now have these nice interlocking seams. That's because we press to the dark every single time. Whether you press to the dark or press to the light actually doesn't matter. Just be the same every time. That way you'll have the interlocking seams. We'll go ahead and put a pin right along that and we'll be able to keep that pin in there just like I spoke of so that it keeps everything really locked in. And if you want to put one more pin down here, that's great. And now we'll have that ready to go. This is the point that we know we want to come together perfectly here. So as I go right side together, I don't want to sew here and hope that comes out. I will now remember this is where I want to start sewing and simply flip that. Again, I've got a nice interlocking seam. We'll repeat those steps of a pin right up there and one in the corner. And let's go sew our quarter inch seam allowance. Okay, so now once we cut these apart, this is where we will begin to press our seams open. Because as you can see, there's no advantage to the seam going this way or this way. It's just equal distribution of the bulk. And let's press that open. Plus, when you open the seam, you get to see your visual target for our next step, and that's right there. See where that little V comes together? That's our quarter inch point that we will be using to our advantage in our very next step. So let's press this one open as well to not only evenly distribute the bulk, but also create that visual target that will help us get our two halves of our pinwheel block sewn together as precisely as we can. Again, let's lay that out. I've done that step too, where I have literally, this is like true confessions. <laughs> okay, that's <laughs> reality quilting. I've sewn them together like that. I, this has happened, yes. So I'm going to go ahead and lay that like that, confirm I have the correct site picture. Once I do, we'll lay those right side together and I just take a little peek right there because it's very easy. It's harder to get seams on the money locking in exactly where you want when you don't have interlocking seams. That's the downside of seams being pressed open. You need to take extra care to make sure you are lined up because you don't have that lock. Now I'm going to put a pin in here as well as up in this angle and here. I don't want anything moving. Stay right there where we sew this together here. And as we sew, we'll be crossing that V. I'm going to be looking for that place. So let's go ahead and take that here and let's press that open. OK, 
Okay, let's see how we did. I think we did a good job. I think we're happy with that. Now, we want our block to be measuring four and a half. I have a four and a half creative grid ruler here. And it looks like I have just a touch to square up, just ever so little. So I've got my center line, my four and a half ruler. So I've got this white line, vertical and horizontal. I don't know if you can see it. Let me show it over here. Maybe you can see it better. This one right here, that and the bullseye. Isn't that incredible? All in one little tool. Plus I have this diagonal line. So I can line this up. Now if I should have had a spinning mat with me because once I start squaring up a block, I don't want to move that block. I don't have a spinning block <laughs> or a spinning mat with me today. So I'm just going to make do with what I have lining up here, here, and diagonally, and just squaring up. See, this is, this is what happens when you don't have a spinning mat, is now I'll have to turn my shape and reacclimate. Not a big deal. That's what we all did before we had this beautiful option of a spinning mat, but that's why spinning mats were invented, is to skip that very step and increase our accuracy and safety, of course. Looks like I don't have as much to square up on this side. And just a touch over there, I could see that one just a little bit right there. So we've got our block all nice and squared up. Okay, let's do that. Now there's our block. Now comes our ability to what's called snowball the corners. So we'll grab our fabric and I'm going to give you two options. I'm going to do two of the sides the traditional way that you probably learned, the way I learned, you learned. And then I'm going to show you how to do that with something called the corner clipper, which is a really cool tool. On the back side of your fabric, if you're going to be doing uh, the traditional method, we're just going to draw a line, diagonal to diagonal, right, right in that pocket, right in that diagonal. And we'll be placing this here, sewing directly on that line. Very intuitive. That's probably not a big surprise to you at this point. It's pretty obvious what steps need to come next. Let me just sew those two. So that's the, this is going to be the traditional way we learned. And then I'll introduce that corner clipper. And if you watched our videos for the last couple months, you've seen the corner clipper, you already know what I'm going to do, but maybe you didn't watch those last. So I'll demonstrate that again. So whenever I snowball a corner, I don't trim right now. Some people just come and trim that quarter inch right away. I like to press it, make sure I did hit that corner because if I didn't, I'm just going to seam rip it and do it again. Some, every now and again, fabric shifts. Maybe I didn't, maybe I don't pin, whatever the situation may be where it's not right. And then I just go, no problem. And then I go seam rip and try again. And I'm happy with what I'm seeing. So now I'll lay that flap back. I've got my nice quarter inch seam on this nice smaller ruler. This is the three and a half by six and a half. And this is very much a go-to ruler when you just kind of want to have something small on your table. You just need a straight edge and that distance is plenty for you. And, and it's really ideal for all of the blocks in this series. So I'm really enjoying this ruler a lot. And I'm also enjoying the four and a half because I can check myself. Are my blocks coming out to be the right size? So that's what we did with the traditional method. What's this whole thing with this corner clipper? That's this tool down here. Same fabric, except now you don't need to be using the straight edge and be using the uh, marking tool. What we'll be doing instead is still placing this in those corners. We know we would traditionally draw this line, sew, and trim away. Instead, what we'll be doing is laying that corner clipper on. You can see the diagonal line right there. You have the edge here. 
the line here and then up the side as well. And we will trim that. So when we go to the sewing machine, that's it's just ready to go. And when we come back, we press away and there's no trimming. That step is already done for us. We will do the same here where I know this is my line. This is the part that's going to be trimmed away. So once again, my visual check. First check, that square needs to be exactly on top of the square beneath it. That needs to happen right there. Next is making sure that we're truly diagonal to diagonal. Checking here, here, and up the side. Once I have it, go ahead and make the cut. If you're inclined to pin, the longer the distance, the more likely I'm going to pin. I'm just going to pin here anyway, and let's go sew both of those. press away and unlike before where I had to now you know yep I'm happy with that go back get my straight edge and trim away it's just done so the corner clipper I love the accuracy I love the time savings it saves me many steps and hey it's fun to use so now you get to be able to make your pinwheel block or your pinwheel unit, snowball the corners to make your beach ball block. And you'll continue doing that with all of your beautiful colors. And then just like we've done in all of the previous months, you'll cut your background a little bit larger than you need to, and you'll be doing the applique. I want to mention one thing about this month's applique that's a little bit, it's not different, but there's just one more step. And that is on the actual umbrella handle, you kind of thread one fabric the other so as you're laying things out of course you'd be doing this on your light box with your applique pressing sheet just be mindful that just for fun we went ahead and threaded the handle where you're going underneath the part of the s and then over the top so it's just one thing there just to be mindful of that's all i wanted to mention to you but that process then once everything's down of course, you'll be using your beautiful applique thread set to stitch everything down. Once you sew your beach ball blocks together and you're able to measure that length, you'll go ahead and trim your applique background to that same length. Join those two and finish as you would in all of the previous months. So we're moving right along and I'll see you next month for a year in words in August. See you then.